Hi, I'm Katherine Heigl, and I play Tully Hart on Firefly Lane. It's a story about an everlasting friendship between two women. Let's see how the story comes to life from book to screen. And suddenly Tully was coming through the doorway, sweeping through, actually, moving with a grace and confidence that was more movie star than teenager. In a bright blue mini dress and white go-go boots, she looked old enough to be driving a car. Without saying anything, she grabbed Kate's arm, pulled her through the living room and into a kitchen in which everything was pink. Walls, cabinets, curtains, tile, counters, table. When Tully looked at her, Kate thought she saw a flash of something that looked like embarrassment in those dark eyes. Was that your mom? Kate asked, uncertain of what to say. She has cancer. Oh, Kate didn't know what to say except, I'm sorry. Quiet pressed into the room. Instead of making eye contact with Tully, Kate studied the table. Never in her life had she seen so much junk food in one place. Pop-Tarts, Cap'n Crunch, Quiz Boxes, Fritos, Funyuns, Twinkies, Zingers, and screaming yellow zonkers. Wow, I wish my mom would let me eat all this stuff. Kate immediately wished she'd kept her mouth shut. Now she sounded hopelessly uncool. To give herself something to do and somewhere to look besides Tully's unreadable face, she put the casserole on the counter. It's still hot, she said stupidly, considering she was wearing oven mitts that looked like killer whales. Tully lit up a cigarette and leaned against the pink wall, eyeing her. Kate glanced back at the door to the living room. She doesn't care if you smoke. She's too sick to care. Oh, you want a drag? Uh, no, thanks. Yeah, that's what I thought. On the wall, the black Kit Kat clock swished its tail. Well, you probably have to get home for dinner, Tully said. Oh, Kate said again, sounding even more nerdy than she had before. Right. Tully led the way back through the living room where her mother was now sprawled on the sofa. Bye, girl, from across the street with the cool neighbor attitude. Tully yanked the door open. Beyond it, the falling night was a blue-purple rectangle that seemed too vivid to be real. Thanks for the food, she said. I don't know how to cook, and Cloud is cooked, if you know what I mean. Cloud? That's my mom's current name. Oh, it'd be cool if I did know how to cook, or if we had a chef, or something. With my mom having cancer and all. Tully looked at her. Tell her you'll teach her, take a risk. But she couldn't do it. The potential for humiliation was sky high. Well, bye. Later, Kate stepped past her and into the night. She was halfway to the road when Tully called out to her. Hey, wait up. Kate slowly turned around. What's your name? She felt a flash of hope. Kate, Kate Malarkey. Tully laughed. Malarkey, like bullshit? It was hardly funny anymore, that joke about her last name. She sighed and turned back around. I didn't mean to laugh, Tully said, but she didn't stop. Yeah, whatever. Fine, be a bitch, why don't you? Kate kept walking. He sat at his desk looking tired. His long hair was a mess, as if he'd been running his fingers through it constantly, shoving it back from his face. Dozens of newspapers covered his desk, so many that even the phone was hidden. Malarkey, he said, sighing. Shit, I forgot you started today. Kate wanted to make a joke about it, but her voice wouldn't cooperate. She was so keenly aware of him, it was vaguely disturbing that he hadn't even known she was here. Come on in. What do you have there? Lunch. I, I thought you might be hungry. You bought me lunch? Was that wrong? I'm sorry. I... Sit down, he pointed at the chair opposite his desk. I appreciate it, really. I can't remember the last time I ate. She moved to the desk, began unpacking their lunch. All the while she felt him watching her, those flame blue eyes of his intently staring. They made her so nervous that she almost spilled the chowder. Hot soup, he said, his voice low, intimate. So, you're one of those. She sat down, looking at him, unable not to. One of those? A caretaker. He picked up the spoon. Let me guess, you grew up in a happy family. Two kids and a dog, no divorce. She laughed. Guilty. How about you? No dog, not so happy. 
Oh, she tried to think of something else to say. Are you married? Popped out before she could stop it. Nope, never. You? She smiled. Nope. Good for you. This is a job that takes focus. Kate felt like an imposter. Here she was, sitting across from her boss, trying to focus on saying something that would make him admire her, and she couldn't even make eye contact. It was crazy. He wasn't that good looking. Something about him just hit her so damn hard she couldn't think straight. Tully threw her arms around Kate and held her tightly, then grabbed her hand. Come on, I want to dance. You too, Johnny. We can all dance together. There were men dancing together and women making out to the beat of the sex pistols. The girl beside Kate, wearing a black plastic miniskirt and combat boots with fishnet stockings, was dancing alone. Tully was the first to start dancing, then Johnny, and finally Kate. At first she felt awkward, literally a third wheel, but by the end of the song she'd softened. The alcohol was a lubricant, making her body more fluid somehow, and when the music changed and slowed down, she barely hesitated to step into Tully and Johnny's arms. The three of them moved together with a natural ease that was surprisingly sexy. Kate stared up at Johnny, who was gazing at Tully, and she couldn't help wishing just once he'd look at her that way. I'll never forget this night, Tully said to both of them. See how the rest of the story comes to life on Firefly Lane, now available on Netflix.